Thank you, Eric, for, for joining uh, me today uh, and taking the time to sit down. I just wanted to take some time to get a chance for you to kind of share your story, share more about you with our, our members and our students. So uh, if you could please just introduce yourself. Well, first of all, thank you for having me, Hammer. Um, well, my, like I've been doing martial arts for about 15 years now. Um, for the people that don't know me, my name is Eric, obviously. And um, yeah, so I've been doing that for 15 years. Uh, before and like like during like my teenager years, like I did a lot of sports. I always like re enjoy sports. Um, I I played hockey competitively for a long time. How many years were you playing? Uh, uh, I stopped. I stopped playing hockey when I I was just turned seventeen because I played junior major for half of a season, and uh, when they they cut me in uh, December and they sh uh, they uh, sent me back to junior Chipotle, I finished the season there. And after when I see my chance of like playing NHL and stuff were like lower, mm -hmm. I, I I stopped like hockey because it was my goal, and when I saw it was not something possible, I. Uh, I was a little like discouraged at this point, and I decided to to stop and try to find uh, other thing that what, I would like to do. How old would you have been when you started playing hockey? I would be, I would say, like I started at five years old. At five years old. Five years old. Yeah. So five years old, started playing hockey, and you went all up to the way of what is it? The junior major. Junior, junior major. major. Yeah. So it's like uh, Ottawa six seven mm -hmm. that level. Yeah. So basically, the the step down from getting into NHL. Yeah, exactly. And you would have been 17 at the time? Yeah, yeah when I stopped, I was 17. Yeah, I was 19 and 17, yeah. What so. what was that like, having that kind of experience as a, as a 15, 16, 17-year-old, being in that world of, of hockey and at that level? Uh, it was pretty special because, uh, like, um, even at that level, like, you, you know, um, when you, you compete at, at that level, you go, like, uh, and people kind of start like recognizing you and like you know like it's like the the, the arena is full and there's a lot of you get used to crowds to big crowds and playing in front of big crowds and stuff so it was a really good experience to develop maybe that side and like to see how, how much i like to compete in general you know and mm -hmm. so it, that was uh, a great experience and and uh obviously i was able to carry that later in my life as well yeah i i I would at that age I would have been overwhelmed to well, be on like, such yeah. a stage. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think I was like too dumb to realize. <laughs> <laughs> to realize, I, I think I, I'm more like conscious of it now. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, for sure, it was uh, it was something special. And and so as you transitioned uh, out of hockey, mm -hmm. you know, what were your your next steps? You'd say. Um, I was a little lost, you know, like at this point, I was like not sure where I wanted to go. I had a little like phase in my life. I was a little, like more like rebel, if you want to say, after hockey. It was because uh, uh, hockey kept me really on track, you know, because like I wasn't able to do a lot of like what regular teenagers do sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, I was refocusing on, on hockey. So when I stopped hockey, I was like, yeah, friends, and, like not doing this show, yeah, all the good things, you know, and like we learned by experience, right? And, and um, I started like just lifting weights and you know enjoying just working out and I did that for a while and um, this is like uh, right after and after that um, I started like thinking what I want to do for my future and stuff so this is when uh, I decided to go back to school and uh, after my school like I took the visit like maybe like a year or two when I was like not sure what I want to do. I work different jobs and, and trying to find like something I was passionate about as much as hockey, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I decided to go back to school in, in police foundation to become a police officer. officer. So that's what I wanted to do. I was like, maybe it's gonna be good for me. And so I went back to school and it put me back on track a bit, you know, like back on track and having, and helped me to have goals again. Yeah. And um, so it was a two year program. And uh, this is how I decided to start martial arts as well. To have the, these types of skills in your back skills pocket. in my back pocket for the job I wanted to do, right? So yeah. I decided to start martial art. And obviously, like, martial art becomes something way bigger than I thought it would be. Of course. And, and uh, But this is how, like, I decided to start. Because yeah. I was like, okay, I need to learn how to defend myself, protect myself, and might be skills that I might be able to use later in my career. So this is why I started. Yeah, I, th I think for anybody who would be pursuing any type of security work yeah. or they want to put themselves in a position of, of law enforcement, I mean, I think jujitsu skills go hand in hand. 
knowing how to defend yourself, protect yourself, and also how to have a level of control on how to deal with violence. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and, and I think that's a, obviously a smart move for anyone at any age to have those skills in your back pocket, mm -hmm. especially if you're pursuing to become a police officer. Mm -hmm. So after school, you know, where did you find yourself next? Um, so after school, uh, and by the way, I agree with you. Like it should be like in my in my book, like mandatory for like uh, for law, like like work or any uh, first or any responders, first, first responders, yeah, dealing like, with public it, 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 public and violence, right? And and uh, I even saw like in the state, there are some places now it's mandatory for like the the, the, the police of, police officer to to do the jitsu. So mm -hmm. so that's a, a great step forward, I find. Um, yeah, after school, so uh, I, like I started like, the process to become police officer with the OPP. Yeah, and during that process, a long process, it's like over a year process because there's a lot of interviews and, and different steps for the the process uh, of becoming becoming a, a police officer. And uh, I got a job at uh, the House of Commons during that time for the Security Service. So I started working on the Parliament Hill, mm -hmm. and it was uh, a great experience. I got a lot of like uh, good training. Uh, it was a lot, all the training we were receiving was from the RCMP, so uh, like all the training was a lot of fun, and uh, the job was not necessarily what I wanted to do, though, and uh, I still do it like for a little bit, like under two years, mm -hmm. um, but you know it was like in the same line of work that I wanted to do. So, yes. so and, and like I said, the training was fun, and. Um, but it wasn't. I was still like planning on becoming a police officer at that point. Yeah. And uh, during that period of working on the hill, I started doing uh, competition. You know, competition. Like I started doing like uh, some uh, amateur fighting, amateur MMA fights. Yep. And before that, I had some uh, kickboxing fights experience. Mm -hmm. But I started do doing some uh, a little more com competition, competition and stuff in the martial art world. And I I kept like falling in love more and more with uh, martial art. Did you end up fighting uh, professionally uh, in MMA? Yes, yes, I fought professionally. Uh, I fought four times professionally. Amazing. Le later in, 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 in your career. In my career, yeah, later in my career, yeah. And um, so I started fighting amateur and competing in Jiu Jitsu as well. Yep. Uh, and and uh, so I'm like, okay, I think uh, there's something there, you know, something there. I, I want to do something. I want to do, uh, I want to be more serious about that, right? Yeah. And. Um, at one point, I was like starting to be a little, like a lot, like really bored of my job, and I was like, I, I don't want to. I'm not happy here. I don't want to do that, and I need to find something that makes me happy. And the the, the place I was the most the happiest was at the, at the gym, training martial art, right? Yeah. So I was like, I want to be there full time. So this is where like I just decided to quit my job, and started teaching part time, <laughs> for like not even half of the money I was making, uh, not even close. And, and uh, but I was really happy at that point, and this is how like this is what brought me where I am today. So, yeah. so, so uh, I I don't regret my choice whatsoever. I it, <laughs> it's it's a remarkable to hear you say it because I think I, I think a lot of people can identify that where they're in a position, maybe where they're doing a job that pays them very well, mm -hmm. you know, and obviously people need to get paid, and uh, I know people enjoy having that level of security with that paycheck. But when you're going home with that paycheck and you're unhappy or that feeling of unfulfillment, mm -hmm. you know, I remember uh, myself, I was pursuing, um, uh, I was in school. I got into Carleton University. I remember uh, the, the Ottawa Academy of Martial Arts just opened up on Carling at this time. And I had been with the team for maybe about uh, two years about this time. And I remember being at university, sitting in class, and the, t the professor is talking, and all I could think of was armbar, sweep, <laughs> triangle, yeah. how would yeah. I do this, how do I stop that? And I remember just feeling really unsatisfied with this path of school. And when I thought about where was I gonna go with school, yeah. I didn't know where it was gonna really take me. And I, I, and, I, and I thought of all these career options. You know, I, I made a really difficult decision to walk away from school where, uh, you know, all those years in high school, uh, secondary schooling was the path. My parents, lots of my family was like, yeah, this is what you do. You mm -hmm. go you go on a university or college and then you go on to your career. Yeah. And then I, I walked away from school, went all in on martial arts. And, you know, yeah, here, here I am today yeah. having this conversation with you yeah. about something that, you know, where I think you and I, we pursued our passion. Mm -hmm. We pursued yeah. something that we both saw a lot of great value in, mm -hmm. work with great people, and then also face you know some incredible challenges. 
Yeah. You know, where, where would you say, uh, you know, what are some of the unique experiences you've gotten to have in martial arts or even in jiu-jitsu, for instance? Just, um, one of the most experience, uh, like the most amazing experience I've been having, like, uh, I think to challenge myself and, and stuff like, obviously at, at like early years was on the mat, just like having the courage to show up at the gym and like meet like the instructor the first time and be in class with people who know what they're doing already and stuff. And like, that's like, can be reintimating, right? So that was the first step. So that was the challenge to, to, to pass at first. And, and uh, after you, you start training and now you see like the competitive guys and you're like, oh, I want to train with these guys now, you know, like uh, I, I want to bring that to the next level. And, and like, and uh, that's how I was at that time. Like I was young, I wanted more and more. So uh, like, yeah, so that was the next step. But obviously I feel like what challenged you like the most, like uh, is can be like competition, you know, if you're able to bring that to and compete against another human being and like mm -hmm. everyone want the same thing as you. And like that, I think that's like, that that's pretty hard you know that's pretty hard and that's uh but really uh, rewarding you know absolutely yeah. I, I you know i can't agree more with uh that word courage yeah you know the the courage it takes to just step into the room sometimes mm -hmm. and, and to train and the funny thing is the courage is to face yourself mm -hmm. you know it's to get past you who might be holding yourself back mm -hmm. it doesn't even have anything to do with the people in the room it's just mm -hmm. maybe how we perceive uh, training and how we perceive the the challenge of doing martial arts and that exercise of courage and putting the courage on display and for who for yourself mm -hmm. you know and I absolutely overcoming that challenge uh, I think is very rewarding mm -hmm. but also that courage then spills into everything you do outside life, outside of the gym yeah in, in, yeah, in life yeah. and then you uh, you know exercising it that much further in competition and uh, you know like I know you've traveled quite far to compete. Yeah. You know, where are some of the places you've been uh, so far in your career? Uh, like uh, I've been like pretty much everywhere you can imagine in the States, you know, like I did a lot of different like opens for Jiu Jitsu. So like from like New York, uh, Boston, uh, um, Miami, you know, Orlando, Texas, you know, like I, I've been like over like a lot of places and had the chance to compete against guys from everywhere. Yeah. So that was like really interesting. Like we've been to LA like so many times, you know, yeah. and, and, and um, that was great experience to travel also to compete and challenge yourself against people from all over the world right mm -hmm. and, and uh, that's like a pretty neat experience you know like to have like people that do the exact same thing as you do but all over and like bring everybody everybody together and compete you know against each other that's what that's pretty uh, that's pretty uh, special yeah. and I, I was uh, you know just thinking here talking about some of the places you've been, you know, I think a, a, a fun story is uh, your was I think it was the first time you went to Pittsburgh to fight at the Stout Promotions. Yeah. What what, what ended up happening? How what, what did it take just to get to Pittsburgh? Yeah, so it was a <laughs> very special uh, special trip. So uh, we got there. It was uh, Justin and I were competing on that card, and we had like uh, other competitors who were already there at that point. But we were driving to Pittsburgh, and uh, obviously you had to stay back to take care of the gym. Yep. And uh, so we had like uh, three of our members who wanted to watch the show and drive with us down so we, we we drove down with one of the members van in, in like uh just before new york like in, in, in like watertown actually like the, the van broke down so so it was like pr pretty intense story so now we like oh are we going to be able to make it so finally like one of uh like uh, super nice wife, like uh, one I remember, like decide to like to drive from Ottawa to bring us another car, <laughs> and and drive back with someone else who was following her, and so we wait like five hours at Starbucks sitting there for for, for the car, and when the she got there, we we hit the road to get to Pittsburgh, and we got to Pittsburgh. It was like I think it was two or three a.m. and we we're fighting the day after. Like we got to Pittsburgh, we got to the wrong hotel because uh, they had the same hotel with uh, same, same name, name same yeah. name. So, so we had to uh, like realize in the right hotel. We have to drive a little farther to get to the, the right hotel. And finally, we got there and we were able to, uh, to 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 nap during the day and like trying to recover as much as possible. And we end up winning our fight. So it was a good experience at the end of the day. You know? like, and the team yeah. got to be there to, yeah, the team, to experience to experience it. it exactly. The team was be there. Like a bunch of our members who came with us and stuff were able to see that. So 
I was pretty grateful to be able to do that with every everyone, you know. Yeah, I, I you know, I think that's what's kind of fun about doing this with you today is mm-hmm. that I think a lot of our members, you know, get to they don't always get to experience uh, some of these road trips, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that's what kind of makes our, our team special is where students can come. Like, you know, students are welcome to travel with us wherever we're going and whatever events we're, we're doing, mm-hmm. you know, not just competitors. You know, if people want to just come support. Cheers. Come, yeah, like yeah. I've, I've traveled to California. I can't even tell you how many times where I've traveled with many competitors, but we've had always always students come just to witness, yes, yeah. just to be part of the experience mm-hmm. and, and, and be part of the camaraderie. Mm-hmm. And it, what's great about traveling with the team is you really get to know each other so well. Mm-hmm. You know, and we, we've even done trips where we just go to like, for instance, like New York City just to go train. You know, there was one time where I took the team down to Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. just to go sightseeing, uh, also to Boston. And we've trained with some great black belts, part of Team Henzo Gracie mm-hmm. in Washington and Boston and New York City. So it's kind of neat to, you know, not only travel with the competitors, but even travel with the students and basically build these relationships. Relationship, yeah. yeah, like if we ever go to Pittsburgh, you know, we can go train with uh, Warren Stout and Andy uh, in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. They have a beautiful school and, you know, and also compete at a phenomenal And event. I remember this exact trip in Pittsburgh you talk about, you know, like obviously that trip was what brought us closer together with the members and stuff like these specific members now like uh, like are great friends right and yeah. and we, we got to know each other better in, in a different environment than just on the mat right exactly so so that's why i think it's great everybody and competition is not for everyone it's okay as well uh, and but like it's still like a neat experience to travel with the team and witness it yeah. yeah absolutely and um it's 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 a lot of fun getting to share these very unique moments with our members Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I'm really hoping as time goes on, as we get better with uh, the YouTube and all the other social media, that our, our members can really see and follow and, and, and c- kind of catch the story as mm-hmm. it unfolds. You know, at the moment, what would you say is next for you right now? Uh, f- for me, right now, uh, like, I have like a few, like, few things I want to focus on. Uh, for myself, uh, obviously, I, w- I want to be back on the competition scene as soon as I can, like when the competitions are back, uh, I, I want to compete and I want to keep challenging myself that way while I still can. And uh, but I still I, I want to work hard with you, with Justin as well, to build our young competition team as well. Absolutely. And and, and, br- and bring the next generation, you know, g- generation of competitors uh, ready. And also, I think there's a lot of uh, neat stuff going on at uh, our school right now with everyone, all our members, the Mutai program, our jiu-jitsu. A lot of new people, new faces, and, and uh, I'm excited to, uh, to be a part of that and, and help uh, develop like our new uh, members and students. Yeah, yeah you, you, know, uh, you know, talking about n- new members all the time uh, and, and the role you're playing, you know, it's been uh, an amazing experience for me to watch you grow as an instructor, mm-hmm. you know, where you started off uh, as, a, as a student, as a teammate, and, and to grow into your role as a teacher uh, uh, within our team, you know, to see you play not only uh, a role in assisting from the youth to the adults, uh, helping them grow on their path in jiu-jitsu as a practitioner or as competitors, but now you're in very much a role where you're even helping mentor our new instructors Mm-hmm. As you know, as a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, mm-hmm. uh, I'm watching you help nurture our future staff team, our future instructors, mm-hmm. uh, starting with the teenagers. You know the mm-hmm. impact that you're having on some of our youth and teenagers who have been members for many years and, and, and who have been having a very successful competition uh, career. You know, I see you helping them bridge the gap and turn around and become uh, mm-hmm. instructors, and it's. Um, it's a really neat experience to witness. I know your interest in teaching the youth was not uh, as as as, uh, as as much as it was for teaching the adults. Well, I think it was about a lot, a lot about also like the uh, belief in myself, you know, mm. and, and and self confidence. I think you were able to help me a, a lot with that. Uh, to, to yeah, you can, Eric. It's not that hard, you know. Like <laughs> like you can do it. Like you know, you can learn and, and do it well. Because obviously, there's a different approach to have with kids than you have with adults right yes. and, and, and uh, you've been guiding me and helping me a lot with that so I, i'm grateful for that 
and uh, yeah, like you were talking about, our young instructors coming on board is is super. Uh, it's, it's really special to see that as well because you remind myself like you know these young blue bells young guys like coming on board like you remind all like i was when i first started when i quit my job and i started doing that full time you know i'm like i was that young guy who just like want to learn and become an instructor and become like you know make martial art like uh, path. becoming a path and a career right yeah so so it's really interesting to be able to be on the other side now and help the, the future guys. yeah future yeah exactly yeah, you're exactly. implementing you know i know yeah. i know you had some kind of insecurities let's say yeah. or some doubts yeah. with 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 teaching the the youth or kids mm -hmm. and yeah like you're 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 doing a phenomenal and job. And, and and i'm i'm still a lot still a lot to learn of course and and, and but i still like it's, it's going the right direction and i'm lucky to have People like you as a mentor, you know, and and I'm grateful for that. I I, I appreciate very much. I think you know, uh, along with uh, with Justin, yourself, myself, like uh, like uh, Coach Joe, uh, you know, even Sensei Ethan uh, helping, yeah. like you know, as as the team we're developing of instructors for jujitsu specifically, you know, you can really see the next generation following in our footsteps. Mm -hmm. And it's really exciting to see not only this next generation of competitors, but again, this next generation of instructors. You know, we're achieving it in our Muay Thai program and even in our future MMA fighters mm -hmm. and, the, and the ones who are choosing to, to walk that path. Well, Eric, thank you so kindly for taking mm -hmm. this time. And I really want to make sure that students know that you're easy to talk to you know? yeah for sure for sure I, everyone like you know sometimes i know it when like like i said i can remind remind remember myself when i first started and you go you know oh, i'm not sure if i should, like yeah please like if anybody have like any question or, or like any doubts or anything they want to share like i'm always super open to talk to them and, and uh but i understand sometimes it can be intimidating when you're new and stuff and you're not sure like oh and, and but everybody's welcome to to talk to me in person or on social media or like whatever like I, yeah. i'm open to it yeah and and this is what i'm really hoping is that yeah. when people watch this and they hear yeah. you talk yeah. i really want them to leave knowing you are open mm -hmm. you're available you're ready to listen mm -hmm. you know a lot of our students do a great job of communicating their goals things they want to accomplish helping them get on that path whatever it is whatever it is they're trying to accomplish you know i'm witnessing you doing it all the time and i just really want to make sure people know you're, you know, it's yeah. you're a quick phone call, yeah. email, whatever. Yeah. Do you, it. Yeah. yeah, you're available. Yeah. And uh, the reality is, like, you obviously love it. Mm -hmm. And you're obviously quite passionate about it. And mm -hmm. you're just trying to share that with others. Of course. Rock and roll. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time, Eric. Thank you, Sensei.